You, you got this recording? Yeah. This shit okay, right here? Warrior lady? This yeah, shit yeah, right, I'm, I'm right, you can't do nothing warrior. with it. As yeah. long as it's, let me see, let me as long as this car is on the field, the control cannot be switched. Let's cannot see. be switched, man. No thousand eyes, no relic, nothing. You cannot take this any place. Three of them. I want to start this off by giving the biggest shout out that I can to my sponsor, MetaMats.com. They make the best mats in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. They're also the best sponsor in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. They made the trip possible for us, and he provides me with enough merch to where my friends all got to represent their brand as well as me while we were down there at the tournaments. Uh, freaking great guy. And uh, since it's the spooky month, I'm going to be recording my videos on his spooky mats that he made for me last year. Uh, and this one is the uh, the limited edition one, the uh, black and red ones that I think was the rare. Yeah, it was the rarest one. Uh, we're going to be doing this deck profile on this mat. Shoutouts to MetaMats. You can also get 10% off, um, you know, on their website using the code Yugi Jesus. You can also use the same code Yugi. Jesus on boardwipe.com and get a 10% discount on stuff there as well. But this video is going to be all about this. Oh, shoot. I thought I had it organized for the. Shoot, I got to reorganize it. I thought I already had it organized. All right, so this video is going to be called Even Better Beatdown for Go Format because the last time I showed you guys this deck, well, well, except in the vlog I made about the tournament a little while ago, but either, either way. Last time I showed you guys <laughs> Blind Little Oil Beatdown, the video was called Better Beatdown for Goat Format. So, this is even better Beatdown for Goat Format because this uh, technically was the first place deck of that tournament. I say technically because the deck got first, but I played my cards in the wrong order at the final table, table after being undefeated and screwed up. <laughs> but uh, the cash prize was still good for second place, so, you know, it was all smiles, all good, even if the cash prize wasn't. It was still a really, really good time. Um, everyone had fun, good turnout, you know, all that stuff. Uh, I made a vlog about that um, event already, so check that out. I have, I'll have a card for it up right now. But for those of you who just want to see the deck profile, I got you right here. Let's get right into it. Three blindly little goblin, because this thing cannot be snatched, stolen, it cannot be uh, thousandized, it cannot be relinquished, it cannot be mind controlled. It, it just, it's a stud for you. You don't have to set dust tornado behind it, you know, you just do anyways, uh, blow out the back row. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I say, you don't have to set a dust behind it because once again, it can't be snatched, stolen. So, um, this is the main beater. It's a warrior, so you can get it with Rhoda, anything. This gives you uh, essentially a buy against uh, standard goats and monarchs because uh, monarchs can't uh, brain control this to tribute it, and they play three brain control typically. I mean, they can still soul exchange it, of course, of course, you know, they'll play that as well, but they can't brain control it. Um, so, this um, leaves a lot of cards in their deck dead. Not to mention, this is an aggro deck, so their knocks are already dead and stuff. <laughs> and Snatch Steel is dead. Uh, this, the goal of this deck, one of the many goals of this deck, is to make sure that your opponent. It has a lot of dead cards in their hand. Anyways, uh, speaking of dead cards, you want their flips to be dead. <laughs> Mystic Swordsman. This is also a warrior that you can search with reinforcement of the army. So uh, you use this to just uh, kill um, Grave Giver Spy mainly. <laughs> like, um, I mean, Magician of Faith, sure, Dequichi, sure, you know, Merchant, etc., etc., etc. But mainly Spy. As soon as I see Spy gone, or if like no if I knock a Spy and I see all three Spies gone, I know I won. Like, <laughs> I just dig and dig and dig and dig. And what makes that possible is Marauding Captain. I should have been playing this card the entire time and beast down back in the day and everything i don't know why i wasn't it's it's a card that i really had to like rediscover <laughs> it lets you special summon a level four or lower monster from your hand when it's normal summoned um so every i mean all day at the tournament not only was i 2-0 like like, like 2 0ing everybody i should say not only was i 2 0ing everybody until i cracked a uh, top eight but like every time going second like if i didn't win the die roll i was going marauding swordsman like every game going second every single time going first marauding Marauding blindly or marauding tomato or whatever, you know what I mean? Going second, marauding swordsman, what you got? This this, this is another thing that this deck does is it forces you to have answers to everything right then and there because it's just in your face. It's very, very fast. Um, DD Warrior Lady and Exiled Force. Um, those are 10 warriors. The 11th warrior I play is Grandmaster Sasuke. So Sasuke, um, like I've kind of just briefly explained, um, Gravekeeper Spy is, is really what I'm most worried about this deck because that's a 2k wall and this is an aggro deck. So if they wall up successfully on you, then you give them a chance of winning, right? Because they then, then they can set up. Um, keep them from setting up. Uh, use a Sasuke, this uh, will out Spirit Reaper, this will out, uh, you know, Grave Keeper Spy, like I was just saying. This will out Big Shield Garden, uh, um, all kinds of crap. Like anything you're having problems with uh, in face up, you know, defense mode, even like uh, some Chaos players will still put their Chaos Monsters in defense position. Sasuke, get rid of it, kill it. 
Uh, Meg's out force, uh, I just don't use this on Sangan. <laughs> like, I didn't use it on Sangan um, all day at the tournament. It's part of the reason why I did so well. If you exile force a Sangan, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, you want to uh, Warrior Lady a Sangan. You want to Warrior Lady a Sangan. Um, Warrior Lady's an outer for literally everything. And that's recruiters, just all that stuff. Um, exile force, um, I mainly used to answer problems or to get what I know as a gravekeeper's spy or you know something like that. Um, this will you know out BLS, you know anything. Um, this will out a lot of things as well. The water engine, um, mainly you use um, abyss soldier to um, bounce. Like if you're in a winning position and they're stuck like T setting or just setting monsters, you use abyss soldier to bounce their one monster they set to their hand continuously with serpent and you just dig in over and over and over and over and over again. That's what you do with the abyss soldier. Uh, Infecting virus, uh, really good against uh, chaos. Actually, uh, call spellcaster for spy and for chaos orc gets rid of their whole board. Uh, get standard goats, also call beast gets rid of their whole board. Um, standard goats is also you know a buy <laughs> with this deck because um, you know the buy matchup with this deck because of blindly little goblin. Really, oh my gosh. Um, also, uh, another thing to note that I forgot to note is the Marauding Captain will uh, soft lock. So, uh, Marauding Captain uh, prevents um, your um, opponent's monsters from being able to attack um, other warriors besides him. So, that soft locks with Blind the Little Goblin and soft locks with uh, Mystic Swordsman because they're going to want to uh, kill your Swordsman after uh, you get their flip and uh, they can't attack it and they have to attack Marauding Captain and you still have a flip killer on board and it sets them back and uh, it forces, th that interaction forces Tsukiyomi a lot, which I love because <laughs> uh, then again, like, it, it's good again, then again, a Shura Priest is good against this, you know, because they'll just kill Marauding and then get Mystic Swordsman, but I didn't really see Priest all day, but that's that's the out, but like, uh, either way, I love seeing a Shura Priest and I love seeing Tsukiyomi because they waste a normal summon and they have an open board, especially if I have another marauding captain, I'm just to dig, dig, dig. I want open board. I want an open board. I want to be able to dig into your life points over and over and over again. Um, so then I play Mystic Tomato and Sangan. That's it for the monsters. You guys would be like, "Where's your other dark? Where's Where's Don's Lug?" Uh, I don't play him. I keep I kept trying to fit him in, but he's he's not that good. It's like, look, and you guys are gonna think I'm crazy. I don't play Delinquent Duo either. <laughs> But because if they've already Thunder Dragon, so you, you typically play against Chaos all day when you're playing GOATs against, you know, when you're playing GOAT format, you're, you, yeah, you're playing against Chaos all freaking day, essentially. Um, so, if they've already Thunder Dragoned, then your duo sucks, and if they've already, uh, you know, if they already have a Knight of Salient in hand and like a Flip and Grave or whatever, then your duo sucks, and same thing with um, Don Zalug. And also, I had uh, somebody um, uh, Don Zalug me at the tournament, and they got my serpent. And I could show footage of that right now. So not only do you have to worry about chaos cards, but you have to worry about sinister serpents making Zalug not as good as he could be. And that's just all it comes down to. He can be very, 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 very good. But uh, the goal of playing uh, this ratio right here is just to get to Sangan, to get to Sinister Serpent faster, to be able to own people with Abyss Soldier. Um, I don't know why I ever cut the water engine into so damn good. Um, I actually prima looped people like like all day. Like <laughs> I prima looped a, a lot of that day. If you guys don't know the prima loop with Abyss Soldier, you bounce your own premature burial to hand and then activate premature burial again. Get you a lot of monsters on board really fast, which doesn't really happen in goats. So you can overwhelm your opponents, and that's another thing about, about Marauding Captain that caught so many people off guard is that goats is a slower format. It's a set format. It's a back and forth format, and I was actively trying to not make it that way. I was very much like, no, I have all these monsters on board. You flip Mirror Force now, or you have Torrential now, or you lose. And most of the time, they didn't have it. So I two owed people all day. <laughs> that's that's what it was. Very 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 aggressive. Um, yeah, just make just uh, get their life points to zero before they set up. That's the name of the game here of this deck. Um, two reinforcement of the army, so that will make it um, exactly 20 monsters if you look at it that way. Um, yeah, like drawing two tomatoes sucks, but at the same time, like they always banish one anyways because it's tomato. I mean, think about it. If you have chaos to work, are you are you going to attack into tomato or banish it? Well, you're gonna banish it always, okay? And so that's exactly what happened. So, I, I mean, even if I drew two, it was never that bad, <laughs> you know? Uh, plus, if I drew two, cool, that's uh, double the chance I'm gonna get to, get to Sangan faster. That's, that's how you have to look at it. Um, now, drawing all three kind of sucks, but that, that literally never happened to me. Um, should knock on wood, make sure it never happens to me, but um, I might end up putting a dark in here. I just don't I just don't know where I, where it would be, like where the room would be. Uh, when you guys see the Jars of Greed, you're gonna be like, well, there's there's your room right there. You're playing three Jar of Greed. Ugh, I know, Jar of Greed is so good though, and it helps you see your side deck cards faster, like especially in the burn matchup, so you make sure you see Roll Decree so you get the, the easy win versus uh, burn um, because if you keep decree up against burn you win and uh, you need to make sure you see that decree 
Moving on though, like I said, 20 monsters. Play three mind control all day long. I did not activate mind control on a Gravekeeper spy. Very, uh, very uh, good. Um, yeah, I just practiced a lot, made sure to always activate mind control on, and I really did only activate it on Faith. I think it decoyed you one time, but I got resolved it against Faith several times, and it won me a lot of games. Um, you could even, uh, this is something I thought about, and this could be the, the other dark targets for Mystic Tomato, I guess. So something I thought about was uh, maining a uh, Gravekeeper's guard. Just so if I did take a spy um, with mind control on accident, that I could like, you know, still have a target. But the Gravekeeper's Guard's just okay, you know, he's just 19 and his effect's just okay, you know what I mean? I just, I wanted, I wanted to just kill fast and the, this card helps you do that. Um, there's several times where I would just like not care what a monster was, I will just take it just to get last damage in. And this card lets you do that, this card lets you just dig more because you take, you, you clear the field, you effectively clear the field so you can get direct damage in. As well as a functioning as a flip killer or, you know, flip negator or whatever. Um, to knock because this is the better flip negator. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you want to knock a uh, gravekeeper spy and get that out of the deck. Uh, Dequichi, you know, stuff like that. Um, you want to, uh, no, I love it when I know they have faith because I wait for them to set it so I can take it with mind control and get my own rota back or, you know, or if I don't have a spell, I bare minimum just get the mind control right back. You know, if, if I don't have a spell in graveyard, but you really want Pot of Greed or Graceful Charity with Magician of Faith, <laughs> of course, or, you know, Snatch Steel, because Snatch Steel is very, very, very powerful. Um, it's one of the most powerful cards in Go format, really, if you think, if you think about it. Uh, premature Burial. Um, I play a Premature, um, you know, mainly for Abyss Soldier, with the, for the Abyss Soldier loop, like I've already explained. But uh, the other targets, I mean, you can do Sangan and odds and ends, like a Tomato or, you know, or like a Swordsman or whatever. You know, there's always odds and ends. But mainly Abyss Soldier, mainly Exiled Force. Being able to use Exiled Force again, I love. I love being able to uh, do like a... Uh, so sometimes, uh, so what you can do in the standard GOAT matchup is you can kill a GOAT, right? And then Trib to get Thousand Eyes, and then Prima, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I get something else or whatever if they have like another card up. But you can get, you can kill like three things with Exile in one, in one turn, essentially with Prima if you, if you uh, play right and stuff. And then uh, Heavy Storm, because uh, Heavy Storm is um, Spell Trap Destruction. Um, so that's actually going to start the Spell and Trap Destruction here is Heavy Storm. And then I play MST, because it's uh, MST. Three dust tornado. Since I'm not playing breaker, it's even more important to max out on the spell and trap destruction. Um, especially because like skill drains running around. Breaker's not that great anyways. These are better than breaker. Breaker's great. Don't get me wrong. It's just I I don't I never felt the need to normal summon him. Like it, it, like he was in this deck, but like I didn't want that to be my normal summon ever. Like hardly. Like you, you get what I'm saying. Um, I wanted my normal summons to be other things like outers or just you know standalone studs like you know a blind little goblin or whatever that would just you know stay on the field and let me just keep digging um yeah a breaker can be a uh, what's called a pressure cooker play because you like if you normal summon on your first turn your opponent won't really set anything that's not chainable and stuff that's what we called it is the pressure cooker play um, um you know with breaker being the pressure cooker but uh i i, I just it, it, i mean how often do you draw breaker in your opening hand and like i already said um skill drain is a card and uh, Burn plays Skill Drain, a, a, a Beatdown decks will play Skill Drain, stuff like that. Breaker obviously does not work with Skill Drain, so it's it's an okay card to cut. I mean, a lot of these cards don't work with Skill Drain, but you get it. And since Skill Drain is a card, these cards kill Skill Drain where Breaker cannot kill Skill Drain. Um, two Compulse, it used to be three Compulse, but I cut one for a Torrential. Uh, the reason why is because you can play dead and slow play with this and like own Sukiomis and different things with this and actually that did come in handy. I did slow own a Sukiomi at least one time in that tournament. Um, yeah, I liked the one Torrential over Compulse, especially because like, let's just say they do resolve Spy. This lets you blow up the entire board <laughs> and get them off the board and you really don't care. This is obviously uh, good against standard goats and other things as well. And another thing with this deck is uh, using life points as a resource is another reason why I don't play Delinquent Duo. I will let people attack into me and stuff, especially with Torrential. No, load up that board. Yeah, Torrential. Uh, like, you know, you can summon your own Sangan to trigger it or whatever. And that's another thing. You can really slow play people with Sangan and Torrential. You, you know, you do all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, Torrential is just, uh, it's a board wipe, and, uh, you, know, you know, another board wipe I've thought about playing, I mean, we don't have Ragekki or Dark Hole in this format, right? So another uh, board wipe I've thought about playing is the Lightning Vortex, but Lightning Vortex you have to discard for, you don't always have Serpent. Not to mention, Lightning Vortex only gets face-ups. This, you can slow own face-downs with and stuff. Let's just say you don't have a monster, and they, they summon Tsukiyomi to set their faith again, right? 
Well, now they have two monsters. Blow up, you know, go ahead and two for one them really quick, and you also don't have to worry about faith anymore. And they wasted their summon, so it's going to pass to you, typically, you know? So, yeah, uh, Torrential Tributes is the nuts. And then uh, Jar of Greed. Um, Jar of Greed lets you uh, get to your side deck and stuff faster. Um, I, I, I had people, like, blow this up with Breaker and MST and, and Dust, like, all day that day at the tournament. And I loved it. I loved, loved, loved it. I loved chaining this card, getting a free draw. Um, also, something to uh, say about Torrential, um, some uh, some people will be like, duh, you should always play Torrential. Torrential is fantastic in this format. Well, yes, but actually, no. Uh, not typically in beatdown decks, which is why it wasn't in my previous... It, like, it was this card wasn't in Beast Down, for example, because this card was terrible in Beast Down, you know, when I was playing Beast Down. Um, the, the, I thought the same applied to this deck, but then I started playing this deck a little differently and I realized that Torrential would be very advantageous to have, so I added it to the deck. But typically in, a, in an aggro deck, you want cards that keep you going more, and this doesn't keep you going more. This is just an insurance policy. But at the same time though, I started viewing this as an insurance policy, like, hey, well, they can clap back and this makes sure that they die. So, um, especially if you're not playing Mirror Force, I'm not playing Mirror Force. Um, you could definitely make room for Mirror Force. You could definitely make room for Zalug or whatever you, you feel like playing with a Jar of Greed. Uh, but Mirror Force, uh, I just didn't feel the need for it. Um, and people like to blind MST and like get rid of back row before attacking anyways. And I would rather uh, those cards be chainable, mainly uh, Jar of Greed. Uh, the only non-chainable trap is uh, Torrential, but even that's chainable. You know what I mean? It's chained to a summon, um, but you, you get it. I wanted more chainable cards. And uh, these traps are, you know, Puzz MST are all more chainable than uh, Mirror Force. So uh, that's what I went with. Mirror Force is a great card. It's just, uh, once again, life points is a resource and uh, better uh, monster choices, better, um, you know, gameplay um, using your, own, uh, your opponent's cards against them. Um, and just, uh, I don't know, having better standalone monsters and stuff and outers, just having better cards is better than um, relying on um, I guess Mirror Force to save your ass, or Sakuretsu Armor to save your ass, especially because, um, once again, now this, that's actually an area where Mystic Tomato comes in handy. This card is a floater, of course, uh, so it uh, you know, keeps you alive, keeps monsters on your side of the board. I would always try to Tomato into Tomato, if I could, obviously, to deck thin, and then Tomato into uh, that Sangan after. Yeah, but um, always Tomato into Tomato just for board presence and stuff like that, um, unless you really want that... Um, uh, serpent now then you know, by all means to go Sangan, but even then like I I think I still went to tomato tomato we use my life points as a resource But with all that being said uh, this deck was more focused on being aggressive less less um, focused on um, You know making sure I always had a target for tomato <laughs> You know what I'm saying like what that was not the main focus of the deck main focus of the deck is do not let your opponent set up Get a bunch of monsters on the board really fast with marauding captain and just own them just keep attacking keep digging um and uh, yes, yeah, some cards in the side deck actually help that out. Mainly Trap Dust Shoot, I will show in a minute, because being able to see your opponent's hand and knowing that they don't have Mirror Force or, you know, Torrential Tribute is pretty advantageous, right? Pretty advantageous. So, speaking of the side deck, let's get into the side deck. So, three Kaiku. If I was playing against pure chaos, not chaos control like or chaos you know goats with uh, metamorphosis and stuff but pure chaos i'll put this i'll take out the blindlies and put this in against pure chaos absolutely uh because this is a better card now if i saw metamorphosis you know <laughs> i did not if i saw metamorphosis i left um blindly little goblin in because good luck and also what i found people doing uh, there's another side effect of playing blindly little goblin people will uh, side out their snatch deals because their snatch deal is pretty useless against you and uh, if you know that they do that or whatever if you even see them doing that if you're like i don't know if you just think that they did or anything um you can definitely put in kaiku because your kaiku is even more safe it's still not safe against sukiyomi <laughs> Uh, it's still not safe against Tsukiyomi, of course, uh, because he's got a little butt, but um, he's, he's, he's pretty good. I mean, he, he, he banished, I mean, he, he empties your opponent's graveyard and, and keeps them from summoning their chaos monsters. Um, he's, he's Kaiku, he's freaking great. Um, three Smashing Ground, this is good against uh, that Reasoning Gate crap. It's good against uh, Beat Down Mirror Match and stuff like that, just to be able to clear the board, get damage in. Um, this is good against Jinzo and stuff, just get rid of anything. And plus, it's a generic card that just says blow up 
a face up monster. It's just a generic side. Um, likewise, uh, Bottomless Trap Hole, good against uh, the same things, good against uh, Reasoning Gates. Uh, you call six for Jinzo and anything they bring out. Uh, I don't know, Sacred Crane, even if you want to. You know, Sacred Crane is not a threat. But um, I don't know. Uh, so Demock, they bring out, like, you call six for Jinzo. Um, they hit Demock, you banish it, you, you get it. Um, this is good against, uh, you know, a uh, beatdown mirror match because uh, let's just say they're playing Beast Down. They're playing, uh, so they'll play Berserk Gorilla or any monster that's bigger than your 18s. Just a uh, bottomless trap hole and you don't really worry about it anymore. Three, Royal Decree, because Burn is a deck, um, and I actually cited this against a Panda Burn in the tournament in top four, and it won me top four. Um, so Royal Decree, fantastic card, You um, and th th all the more reason to play uh, Jar Greed in the main, like I was explaining, is to get Royal Decree so that um, you have um, easier matchups against uh, trap-heavy decks. Those decks can be hard to beat. Royal Decree makes those decks easy to beat. So I highly recommend uh, Royal Decree. Um, once again, especially against uh, Burn, because all the best Burn cards, Secret Barrel, Just Dessert, Skill Drain, um, et cetera, et cetera, uh, wall, you know, wall, Gravity Bind, uh, you know, all those cards, they're all traps. This shuts them all off. And then the last three cards, Trap does shoot, because... Like I said earlier, being able to see your opponent's hand <laughs> shuffling out a monster and knowing that they don't have Mirror Force or Torrential Tributes is very advantageous. You just own them faster. <laughs> like if I wanted Swift Game 2s, I would put in Trap Dust Shoot. Um, that's that's really what I did. Um, this is good against uh, Chaos because you get rid of the Thunder Dragons. Uh, this is good against FTK Shenanigans because you get rid of a monster. You can use this against Empty Jar if you want to get rid of their, you know, Morphing Jar or whatever they have in their hand. I don't know. I don't know. No, Trap Dust Shoot's another one of those cards that's generic. You can put it in against anything. Um, it's also not that bad in this deck um, because I'm playing Compulse. Um, you can get your um, opponent's uh, card size in their hand 2-4 to activate it with Compulse or with um, Abyss Soldier. You bounce things with Abyss Soldier to be able to uh, get their hand size to 4. So that actually has some synergy with the, uh, you know, so this has some synergy with the main deck, I should say. Yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, better beatdown for GOAT formats. Uh, like, what I did is I just uh, practiced, uh, like I said in the vlog, I just practiced all week and practiced the order that Chaos players like to play, like to set their cards in and stuff, completely took advantage of that, um, timed my mind control um, correctly um, every single time. But yeah, I really don't know what else to say about the deck. Um, I've already addressed, like, the biggest flaws with it, and not, it's not even really a flaw. Just don't draw all three, don't have terrible luck and draw all three of these um, every single game. How about that? Because I never did. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. There's people, people will overanalyze like every deck profile on the internet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, well, actually. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. This deck is a blast to play. It's, it's a, I mean, it's, it's a blast to the face for your opponent because it's so fast. Um, it, it's, yeah, that's, that's my baby right now. When it comes to goats, this deck's my baby. Uh, I, I have, a, have a chaos deck in mind uh, that I kind of want to build, um, and we'll see how that turns out. You know, if I, uh, if I, if I flesh out the idea fully, uh, you guys will definitely see a deck profile about that as well. You know, after I uh, do something cool at a tournament with that, if I take it, or if I keep taking a aggro decks, I don't know. I just wanted to put aggro back on the map, and I think I did that. You know, because Beast Down is not the same without Xerion. <laughs> it sucks without Xerion, dude. I even said that in the vlog as well. That, uh, yeah, the Beast Down is just unviable, really. Um, especially um, Wang Hu Control, because, like, like Wang Hu Control is really good. Like, King Tiger I just had one over here. King Tiger Wang Hu is a fantastic card, but you can't play, like, other good monsters with it. Like, for example, Mystic Swordsman. You can't play Mystic Swordsman <laughs> with this because your swordsman dies, you know? So, uh, yeah, Beast Down is just, it's okay. It's not very good. Um, I think that Skill Drain uh, decks are better, uh, especially Burn. I think that those are way more powerful. Burn is definitely a deck to watch out for, uh, whether they're playing Wave Motion Cannon, you know, or just Desserts or Secret Barrel, you know, Skill Drain or all of the above. Like, those decks are really hard to beat. All the more reason to play Jerry Greed, make sure you get Royal Decree. Jar Greed, Royal Decree. Hey, that even rhymes! I wish I could do that all the time. Now, dick slap the like button and subscribe. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I actually just made that up. Subscribe! <laughs>